So Holberton is a it's a non-traditional post-secondary school. Um, the way it works is that we're trying to train holistic software engineers, so not just focusing on the technical skills, although that's a very important aspect, right? Um, but making sure that they have soft skills, uh, networking skills, um, they're able to work together as a team, share knowledge, um, and we do that all through projects. So the, the structure here is pretty unorthodox, it's pretty unique. It's a two-year program, except in the middle we have six months where we either can intern or start working. You know, you could also choose to work on your own project. A student receives a project, it has a deadline. Um, we have a little bit of material that's going to help them get started. Uh, maybe documents to read, uh, maybe a video to watch, and then tasks for them to do. Um, and it's up to them to manage their time. Um, it's up to them to, when they're stuck, to ask for help. Um, or if they're understanding something, to be a resource to others who who might be stuck. Yeah, a um, couple of years back I graduated from UC Davis in my studies in political science and sociology. Uh, and afterwards I got into lobbying at the state level for nonprofit organizations. Uh, and while I was there, they asked me to build a website, and I thought that was really fun. Um, and unfortunately, the founder of my nonprofit got really, really sick, so we kind of had to dismantle. And from then, I kind of had to reevaluate what I wanted to do. And since they had me build a website, I thought that was really fun. And I went into contracting work afterwards, uh, and just to start developing my skills there. Did some front end work, but I wanted to develop my skills more, so I came to Hoberton School. Uh, in Russia, I studied international economy, and uh, I work uh, in a bank for uh, for a year before I moved uh, to China, where I studied uh, mainly Mandarin language. Um, and uh, after that, I moved to United States, and uh, here I'm studying software engineering. Um, so after college, like I knew I didn't want to be a doctor, which is what my original plan had been. Um, so I was just like working odd jobs. I was working at a grocery store, and um, I had a friend actually introduce me to the idea of like becoming a programmer, because he had not done anything like that either. And he was like, "Oh, I learned it online." And I was like, "Wow, I didn't know you could do that." So I kind of started looking into it, and um, I kind of started looking at boot camps because um, I like a little bit more structure to like when I'm learning. I don't really like just doing it by myself. Um, so yeah, so I started getting really interested in that and then I found Holberton and that kind of snowballed. Sure, so for the last uh, give or take eight years, I did project management, I worked in operations. Uh, my last job was that I directed logistics for a company. And what did you want to do? Why did I want to change? Yeah. Um, so last year I stumbled on this introduction of software engineering and I, I will never forget that day. I essentially spent 12 hours getting error messages and the interesting thing to me about that experience was that unlike most of my perfectionist tendencies, I was having fun and I'd never had so much fun failing in my entire life. And so it's like if I've had this much fun being terrible at something, how much could I enjoy it if one day I actually got good at it? So from that point on, I kind of in the back of my head was like, oh man, maybe this like might be next. The, the resounding gong that I hear from all of these students is that they just didn't know it was a possibility. It wasn't something that was introduced to them at a young age. Um, you know, boys are encouraged to play with Legos and help dad fix the car and go mow the lawn and like do these physical tasks of fixing things and building things and seeing how things work, breaking them apart and putting them back together again. Um, and girls are encouraged to play with dolls and play kitchen and go help mom clean and do the laundry. All of those things are great. None of them are bad, um, but I think um, it instills this rudimentary kind of um, I don't know, feeling in, in a specific gender of like, oh, I'm good at building or fixing things or I'm good at social interactions, which is kind of how I feel like things have happened. So, um, you know, as women are coming into this program, 
they're pretty new to engineering. They didn't grow up, a lot of them, some of them did, uh, but a lot of them didn't grow up tinkering, uh, you know, building apps by themselves, building websites, websites since they were eight. Um, and this is their first introduction. Um, but I think the cool thing about our approach to this education is that um, women feel comfortable here. Um, I don't know if you guys got to take a look around, but it doesn't feel super geeky. It doesn't feel like it um, fits a very specific demographic. It's art, right? Um, modern art, classical art, Renaissance art. Um, and no matter where you're coming from, gender, ethnicity, age, you can relate to that. Um. So far for me, I think uh, most, uh, the most hard uh, situation is uh, when I uh, face a problem I can't solve uh, soon enough. Sometimes I can spend uh, two, three days trying to solve something and uh, at this at this moment, it's really easy to uh, lose confidence, and uh, then you start questioning yourself: Is it? Did I choose the right field? Is it good for me? And with all this time I already invested in the study, uh, it's kind of hard to bring yourself back on the track and uh, uh, go and ask for help. Um, there have been many obstacles, but perhaps unsurprisingly, the biggest one has been myself. It's really surprising how you internally have this resistance to acknowledging your lack of knowledge. And I think that engineering really brings that out because that's all you do all day long is that you problem solve. And so you have to get really comfortable standing in front of something that you've never dealt with before and being able to look at it and say, okay, I'm not going to take an ego blow. I'm not going to feel you know, incapable of like solving this problem. I'm just going to sit here and patiently chip away at it until I come to a solution. No, definitely not. Um, I imagined, you know, like everybody sitting with hoodies and like hacking, you know, I had no idea. Um, but it's very much like a, as much as it is like individual, like obviously everybody has their own projects. It's very much like a team thing. You have to decide what to work on as a team. You have to collaborate with all of your colleagues and teammates and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely not what I expected, but I think obviously much better. <laughs> what was in my last two jobs, I was only female in technical role, but I was able to develop like really good relationship with my colleagues, um, you know, you know, who are male and they, they generally vouch for me and I've had good experiences with that. Uh, like for example, um, in a meeting when I spearheaded a project, we were trying to get into a new market. Um, my manager didn't mention my name, but, uh, my colleague, uh, spoke up and said like, Lisa's part of the team too. And I, I think he was more upset um, by it than me because that was something I was used to but he had noticed it more and he stood up for me and and it's just like it's just people at the end of the day and I'm glad to be working with good, pe pe good people in my experience. So personally I'm not sure how popular my opinion is on this um, but I think that as with everything it's what you make it. Um, I mean my attitude has been that I don't really care whether or not anyone else does or doesn't want me in tech. I want to be here. And so, um, yeah, like, I don't need anybody's permission to pursue what I enjoy. Um, honestly, my experience has been pretty smooth. Um, I think starting out in a place like Holberton that really values diversity and like inclusion and all that kind of stuff um, definitely helped. Like, I never felt like because I'm a woman, I was being like not being listened to or like anything like that. Um, and I think at my job right now, also, I'm uh, very fortunate to have like colleagues and uh, bosses and stuff that try really hard to make sure that like everybody is included and all that kind of stuff. And so Karen Catlin comes in and she basically addresses the typical issues that happen in the workplace. Um, things again going back to like the cultural aspects of like things that 
we may not notice that we do when we walk into a space, but we need to become aware of, like mansplaining. Um, so when a woman says something and then a man then tries to like explain it more technically, um, or um, interrupting, uh, it's, it's much more common for men to interrupt uh, than for women. Um, and women, when they're interrupted, usually don't resume that initial you know, comment that they were saying. Um, and for a lot of people, these are things that we were culturally raised up in and just are kind of oblivious to. And so Karen comes in and she's like, hey guys, these are real issues um, and it's not okay in the workplace and you need to be aware of them. And here are actionable pieces that you can do when you see it happen, when it happens to you or when it happens to someone else. Um, Um, to not quit, that's I think the biggest thing, because I actually knew a, uh, quite a few amount of women in high school who were taking a computer science class and they all had dropped out of it by the end because they like felt like they weren't keeping up or like they weren't, I don't know, being supported at all. So just not to give up, like eventually they'll, they'll hit a point where like they're good enough and I mean throughout like the whole process like you can never stop telling yourself you're good enough right but like you'll like find the the person in the environment that will support you in that so just keep going i think the biggest thing that you should do is just start to explore i think that it it puts a lot of pressure on you when you um don't allow yourself to enjoy it and to have fun and so i think that you know if somebody even in the back of their mind is considering that they should just start to do an online course or go to a meetup or you know, watch a TED talk. There's so much information out there to start to get exposure. And I think that by creating that cycle and creating that momentum, you're able to see if you enjoy it and if you have fun. And uh, no matter what, just keep, keep working and improving yourself. Um, I want them to know that it's, it's okay to not know everything and that if you're there at the company, take your seat. And of course, like, don't forget to have fun because engineering is fun.